Hello again, Year 5. Uh, we're moving on <coughs> with a new lesson um, and our SPAG starter this morning is to find a definition of some words that are co connected with our topic. <coughs> um, you can use a dictionary if you've got one at home um, or you could go online and try and find the meaning of them um, that way. Okay, so here are your words. So the first word is assassinate. So you might want to write that down and then go off and uh, try and find out what that means. <clears throat> the next word is mobilize. And then you've got citizens. And you've got declare. You've got invade and you've got neutral as well. So like I say, all of those words are really connected to our topic and um, especially what we're going to be learning about um, today in today's lesson. Okay, so pause the video, see what you can find out. Okay, now hopefully you've um, had a look um, to find a definition of those words. So assassinate, I found out uh, it meant murder for political or religious reasons. Now, mobilise uh, means to prepare and organise troops for active service. So that means getting them ready uh, to go to war. Um, and declare meant to say something in a solemn or serious manner. Okay. Um, if you are neutral, it means you're not supporting either side in a conflict. So in a war, you're not going to take sides. So some countries were neutral. Um, and citizen or citizens is a legally recognised subject. So that means that you belong to that country. Okay. And uh, the final one, invade, uh, was to enter uh, a country, so to occupy it or take it over. So hopefully you found some of those meanings. Okay. <clears throat> now, today, um, what I'd like you to do is to create a page for a non-fiction pamphlet or um, a little book or a mini book, something like that, uh, depending on what kind of resources you've got at home that are available to you. But um, it needs to focus on the outbreak or the start of uh, the Great War. Um, it needs to include information about why the war started and who was involved. So using yesterday's research, hopefully um, you've got a better understanding of what took place at that time um, in history. So we're going to break it down now. All this week we're going to be uh, looking at different headings for our pages. So uh, today we're definitely focusing on just the um, start of the war. So you can see this picture um, and this really is the starting uh, point of the war. This was the spark that ignited all the other events. So who was Franz Ferdinand? On your page, you need to include some information about him. That's really key. Okay, so what happened to him and his wife? So I'm still using the five W's to structure uh, the information on my page. Uh, when were the important dates? Okay, so obviously we're talking about history. That's really important. Uh, why did the other countries get involved? And where did this all take place? So which countries were involved at the beginning of um, the outbreak of war? So we're going to watch um, a little bit of a, the main points with someone uh, if you can. You can watch it as many times as you like. Um, it's really a clear film. You might want to make notes whilst you're watching it. Okay, so let's have a listen.
On June 28, 1914, a Serbian man called Gavrilo Princip shot and killed Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. This was the spark that started the First World War. Tension had been rising in Europe for many years as competing European powers claimed new territories. The race to have bigger ships and armies also built tension. By the start of the 20th century, countries in Europe had made deals to look after each other. The British, French and Russians joined together to create a big alliance called the Triple Entente, known as the Allied Powers. The Germans teamed up with Austria-Hungary. They later became known as the Central Powers, with Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire run by Turkey. However, farming gangs did not help the tense situation. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand led to events that meant even if people didn't want to fight, they'd made promises which had to be kept. 28th July 1914, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Russia asked Germany to get Austria-Hungary to hold back. No. And when they refused, Russia prepared her army to fight. 1st of August 1914, Germany declared war on Russia to defend her ally, Austria-Hungary. France, who had a treaty with Russia, now had to get involved. 3rd of August 1914, Germany had a plan to beat France quickly, but this meant they had to invade neutral Belgium. 4th of August 1914, Britain protests at the invasion of Belgium and declares war on Germany. And that was how it all began. And it was to last four years, bringing in even more countries along the way. Okay, a great little clip there. Um, lots of information. Some of the key words that I picked out uh, uh, were tension. Um, there were deals and promises that were being made. Um, they also mentioned a treaty as well. So try and include vocabulary like that on your page, okay? So hopefully that's something to get um, started with. Now, when you're creating your page today, um, you need to organize it using subheadings. So I've given some examples here, um, but it is up to you how you want to organize your page. So um, I thought assassination would be a really good subheading. Triple Entrant and the Central Powers might be another one, or Germany declares war. So again, it's up to you about how you present your information, um, but it must be written using sentences and paragraphs, not just bullet points. So again, make your page um, eye-catching. Think about um, our medieval exploding books and how we set those pages up. Okay, so you've got to really try and engage your reader. So your heading needs to be outbreak of war and I kind of said that could go at the top of the page but it doesn't have to, it just needs to um, jump out at you. Okay, but that is your main heading. Um, some of the things that I thought might be useful if I was reading your page, um, a timeline to show the sequence of events in order. So we're really thinking about the first year, the outbreak of war. So you're prob probably um, looking at the months in more detail there. Okay, um, so you could draw um, or include the flags of the main countries that uh, were of the war during the outbreak. Um, so you can all also use visuals as well. Okay, so um, these are the things that you could do, We've just talked about. Um, there are the flags. Um, of the countries that were involved at the beginning. So you don't have to do all of them. You might just pick out maybe two or three. Um, the timeline, uh, the significant event for the outbreak of the war was the 28th of June, 1914. 
So you could include your timeline. Um, there are further links <coughs> um, on this page that you could look out uh, for. So um, the DK Find Out website is really excellent. And if you focus on the links that I've put up on the screen, um, those are the ones that are really relevant to uh, today's lesson. Okay, so you can do your own research at that point if you want to. Okay, so <clears throat> what you're going to do today, you're going to create a page about the outbreak of war. If you want to make a pamphlet and fold up a piece of paper or your own exploding book, it's absolutely fine. Or if you just want to uh, make a kind of booklet or something like that, that's okay as well. So you should write using subheadings, sentences and paragraphs. Um, you could include definitions of new vocabulary, so a bit like a glossary um, for your reader so that they understand those new words. Um, and you might include pictures or diagrams, okay? So I'm looking forward to seeing um, what you come up with. So bring it back to school um, on Thursday and um, stay tuned for some more lessons. Okay, hoping everyone is well. Cheerio.